Hello and welcome to Technically Explained. In the series Repair Gate General in 21 days, this is lecture number 6. In this lecture, we will geometry related topics. Discuss geometry related angles, triangles, quadrilaterals, polygons, circles, etc. We will discuss all of them. In the students' ke liye quantitative section, we will discuss all of them. This we have discussed in detail. Mein discuss ki hai. Video start the video. A polygon having 8 sides is card. Its right answer is octagon. Hai. लेकिन दो साइड से एक क्लोज्ड फिगर नहीं बनता तो तीन साइड से बनता है और तीन साइडेड क्लोज्ड फिगर का आपको पता होता है कि जी तीन साइडेड जो क्लोज्ड फिगर है उसको ट्रायंगल कहते हैं इसी तरह जो फोर साइडेड क्लोज्ड फिगर होता है जी उसको कहते हैं जी क्वाड्रिलेटरल क्वाड्रिलेटरल अक्सर पूछते हैं कि फोर साइडेड क्लोज्ड फिगर को क्या कहा जाता है फाइव साइडेड क्लोज्ड फिगर को क्या कहा जाता है वगैरह फाइव साइडेड जो क्लोज्ड फिगर है जी उसको कहते हैं पेंटागन इसी तरह सिक्स साइडेड जो क्लोज्ड फिगर होता है जी उसको कहते हैं हेक्सागन इसी तरह सेवन साइडेड क्लोज्ड फिगर को जी कहते हैं हेप्टागन इधर आपसे एट साइडेड का पूछा गया तो एट साइडेड को कहते हैं ऑक्टागन इसी तरह नाइन साइडेड को क्लोज्ड फिगर को कहते हैं जी नेनागन और टेन साइडेड क्लोज्ड फिगर को कहते हैं जी डेकागन Next question, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi pi in the area. We know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. And here it is given 2 pi. So it means that r is equal to 1k. So now I have to find the area, so the area of a circle is equal to pi r square. So here I will put r in the place of 1, so this is pi into 1 square, so this will be pi. So what is the area of this circle? It is our pi. Next of all, the length of a side of an equilateral triangle is to find the area. Equilateral, equilateral triangle is the one which is the three sides equal. And this area is given hai under root 3 by 4 a square. Where a is the length of the side. So I will length of the side. So I will call it L. So area is equal to under root 3 by 4 l square. तो L जो है वो length of any side है तो length of any side इधर one है तो ये आपके पास under root three by four into two square आ जाएगा तो ये तो आपस में कट जाएंगे और आपके पास जो area है वो आपके पास under root three आ जाएगा next सवाल a triangle having no equal sides and no equal angles is known as देखिए जो ट्रायंगल होता है जिसके कोई इक्वल साइड यही के इक्वल एंगल नहीं कहत, नहीं होते उसको कहते हैं जी स्केलेन ट्रायंगल इक्विलेटरल ट्रायंगल वो होता है जिसको तीनों तीनों साइड्स इक्वल होते हैं तीनों एंगल्स और तीनों साइड्स इक्वल होते हैं आइसोसेलस ट्रायंगल वो होता है जिसके दो साइड्स इक्वल होते हैं और स्केलेन ट्रायंगल वो होता है जिसका कोई साइड इक्वल नहीं होता राइट ट्रायंगल वो होता है जिसमें 90 डिग्री का एंगल होता है इसका जो राइट आंसर है वो आपके पास स्केलेन ट्रायंगल है पैरामीटर ऑफ अ रेक्टेंगल विद बेस b एंड हाइट h इज गिवन एज इसका जो राइट आंसर है वो है 2 h b क्योंकि फॉर एग्जांपल अगर आपके पास ये h है ये b है तो पैरामीटर सम ऑफ ऑल साइड्स को कहते हैं तो ये आपके पास होगा h इधर भी h है इधर भी b है h plus h plus b plus b which is actually equal to 2 into h plus b इसका राइट right आंसर आपके पास ये है नेक्स्ट सवाल द एक्सटीरियर एंगल्स ऑफ एनी पॉलीगॉन सम अप टू जो भी पॉलीगॉन है क्लोज्ड फिगर है उसके जो एक्सटीरियर एंगल होते हैं वो हमेशा 360 डिग्री होते हैं सही इंटीरियर एंगल का जो फार्मूला है वो आपके पास कुछ यू है n 2 मल्टीप्लाई बाय 180 डिग्री सही तो अगर आपके पास इंटीरियर एंगल का पूछा गया है तो आपको ये फार्मूला यूज करना पड़ेगा वेयर n is equal to number of sides सही अब पेंटागन में पांच साइड है तो n को आपने 5 में इधर आपने 5 डालना है हेक्सागन में 6 साइड है तो n आपने इधर 6 डालना है ये है इंटीरियर एंगल्स के लिए एक्सटीरियर एंगल का जो सम है किसी भी पॉलीगॉन का वो हमेशा 360 ही होता है नेक्स्ट सवाल द एंगल ऑफ अ ट्रायंगल आर 3x 2x 5 एंड 4x 11 द वैल्यू ऑफ x 6 अच्छा हमें पता है कि सम ऑफ द एंगल्स ऑफ द ट्रायंगल इज 180 डिग्री तो इन दोनों को हम सम करेंगे क्योंकि ये इन तीन ये तीनों को हम सम करेंगे क्योंकि ये तीनों जो है ना वो एंगल्स ऑफ ट्रायंगल है तो हमारे पास होगा 3x 2x 7 4x 11 is equal to 180 degree. So, this will come to you. 9x minus 
सेवन और एलेवन माइनस सेवन और माइनस एलेवन आपके पास माइनस एटीन आ जाएंगे तो ये आपके पास वन एटी आ जाएगा तो ये नाइन एक्स एटीन उधर शिफ्ट हो जाएगा तो वन एटी प्लस एटीन आपके पास वन नाइन्टी एट आ जाएगा अब आपने क्या करना है कि दोनों को नाइन पे डिवाइड करना है तो वन नाइन्टी एट डिग्री डिवाइड बाई नाइन आपके पास जो इसका आंसर आएगा वो आपके पास ट्वेंटी टू आएगा तो एक्स की क्या वैल्यू है वो आपके पास ट्वेंटी टू डिग्री है सही नेक्स्ट सवाल विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग टू एंगल्स आर क्लासिफाइड एज कम्प्लीमेंट्री कम्प्लीमेंट्री एंगल्स वो होते हैं जिनका सम 90 डिग्री होता है अब आप इस आपने इसमें वो एंगल्स ढूंढने हैं जिसका सम 90 हो ये देखिए 65 फाइव प्लस ट्वेंटी आपके पास 90 आ जाता है तो ये इसका आंसर है इनका सम 100 है तो ये कम्प्लीमेंट्री नहीं है इसका सम 180 है तो ये कम्प्लीमेंट्री नहीं है बाई द वे ये सप्लीमेंट्री है सप्लीमेंट्री एंगल दो होते हैं जिसका सम 180 होता है और 50 और 80 का सम 80 डिग्री है तो ये भी कम्प्लीमेंट्री नहीं है तो कम्प्लीमेंट्री एंगल्स आपके पास ऑप्शन ए है डैश एंगल सम अप टू 180 डिग्री जो एंगल्स का सम 180 डिग्री होता है उसको कहते हैं जी सप्लीमेंट्री एंगल्स नेक्स्ट सवाल एन एंगल विच इज लार्जर देन 180 डिग्री एंड लेस देन 360 डिग्री क्लासीफाइड एज उसको कहते हैं जी रिफ्लेक्स एंगल ऑप्टूस एंगल जो होता है ना वो ग्रेटर देन 90 डिग्री होता है और लेस देन 180 डिग्री होता है सही अक्यूट एंगल जो होता है वो ग्रेटर देन 0 डिग्री होता है और लेस देन 90 डिग्री होता है रिफ्लेक्स एंगल जो होता है वो ग्रेटर देन 180 डिग्री होता है और लेस देन 360 डिग्री होता है और राइट right एंगल का तो आपको पता है कि जिसका एंगल मैयरमेंट जो है वो नाइन्टी डिग्री के नाउ वी हैव दिस फिगर इन दिस फिगर This A and C are called opposite angles. Similarly, B and D are called opposite angles. So A and C are opposite angles. Similarly, B and D are opposite angles. Similarly, E and G are opposite angles. Here we go. This E and G are opposite angles. Similarly, F and H are opposite angles. so these all these angles are opposite angles and they are equal in meyer which means that a is equal to c b is equal to d e is equal to g and f is equal to h because they are opposite angles and we studied in previous class that opposite angles are equal in meyer so we have the measurement of a is equal to c the measurement of a is equal to c because they are opposite in measurement similarly b is equal to d because they are opposite angles and similarly e is equal to g because they are also opposite angles and finally f is equal to h because they are opposite angles and opposite angles are equal in measure and other thing is that a and e are adjacent angles so we have a and e which are A E are adjacent angles. Similarly, B and F are adjacent angles. A E are adjacent angles. B F are adjacent angles. And then C and G are also adjacent angles. Are corresponding angles. Other name of adjacent angles is corresponding angles. Similarly, D and H are adjacent angles. So all these angles, they are. adjacent angles are corresponding angles so let me name it adjacent angles and we studied in previous slide that adjacent angles are corresponding angles are also equal in measurement so which means that a is equal to e because they are adjacent angles b is equal to f because they are adjacent are corresponding angles similarly C is equal to G. Why? Because they are corresponding or adjacent angles. And finally, D is equal to H because they are adjacent and and are corresponding angles. So opposite angles are equal. A and E C were opposite angles which were equal. B and D were opposite angles they were equal. E Z, E and G were opposite angles they were equal and F and G were opposite angles which were which were equal. Similarly, the corresponding angles A and E B and F, C and G, and D and H are also equal. So these points are very important for solving MCQs related to geometry. Now we will do one simple example. For example, I have A is equal to this A is 50 degree, and now we are told to find B. 
so b is a question mark we don't know now and and we know for example b is b i don't know so b is equal to question mark and a is equal to 50 degrees so this is my 50 degree angle a is equal to 50 degree and we don't know b but we do know about adjacent angles so this here the angle for example whatever that angle is that is an adjacent angle so here we will have also 50 degree y because the angle here is adjacent to this angle so this will also be 50 degree and we also know that this is a line so b plus 50 degree must be equal to 180 degree which means why is it so because we have a line over here and the degree of a line is 180 degree which means that b is equal to 130 degree so here we have used the concept of corresponding or adjacent lines because a is equal to 50 here so the angle here was also 50 degree and from that we can find the value of b because this whole angle was 180 degree. Then a triangle two angles are 60 degree and 50 degree what is the third angle we can easily find this because we know if we know that the sum of the angles of triangle is 180 degree so suppose the third angle is c so c plus 60 plus 50 will be equal to 180 degree why because the sum of the angles of triangle is 180 degree and if i solve this i am going to get the value of c which is 110 because uh, 60 plus 50 is 110 and we need to subtract 110 from 80 and then we will get what we will get 70 so the angle of uh, angle of c is 70 so how did we find it we find it by using the conclusion that the sum of the angles of triangle is 180 degree that's why we got c is equal to 70 degree Another in a triangle the length of the two sides of a triangle are 4 cm and 6 cm. What will be the range of the length of the third side? We know that the length of the third side is always smaller than the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. So the length of the third side, this third side is always, let this, let me name it as capital C. So this third side is smaller than the sum of these two lengths which means that it is smaller than 10 cm and it is greater than the difference of these two lengths the absolute difference of these two lengths which are 2 cm so it is greater than 2 cm and it is smaller than 10 cm so we can represent is that c is greater than 2 cm and is smaller than 10 cm so the range of c is from anywhere greater than 2 cm and less than 10 cm so if you know that the length of the third side is always greater then the sum of then the difference of the other two sides and it is always always greater uh, it is uh, if it, so if you know that the length of the third side is always greater than the difference of the other two sides and is always smaller than the sum of the other two sides so you can easily solve these kinds of problems other problem is that in an isosceles tri right angle triangle hypotenuse length is 600 root 2 isosceles means two sides are equal so if we have a right angle triangle in which we have two equal sides of course the hypotenuse length is given which is 600 root 2 and we know that hypotenuse side is a side which is opposite to the 90 degree angle so this is my 90 degree this is my base this is my height because it is an isosceles triangle so both <coughs> so the lengths of these two sides are equal so let me name the length of these two sides as x now it is a right angle triangle so i can use the pythagoras theorem which says that hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus perpendicular square and hypotenuse length is 600 root 2 so 600 root 2 square is equal to base square here my base is x i have named it as x x square and my perpendicular is also x why because it is an isosceles triangle in which two uh, sides are equal so 600 under root 2 whole square we get 36 into 2 which means 72 and x square plus x square is 2x square so from here we get x square is equal to 36 and x is equal to 6 because the side of the angle uh, tri of the side of the uh, 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 the side cannot be a negative value so we will have x is equal to 6 so now 
the length of this side is 6 and the length of this side is 6. So we have a triangle like this now. This is 6, this is 6 and this is my hypotenuse which is 6 under root 2. Now we are told to find the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle is half multiplied by base multiplied by height. Here the base is 6 and the height is also 6. So we have half multiplied by 6 multiplied by 6. And if we solve it we get 18 because 6 multiplied by 6 is 36 and divided by 2 is 18. Here with equal sides and one of the side is 6x plus 5. We know that if one of the side is 6x plus 5 this means that every side is 6x plus 5. So this side is also same as this. This side is also 6x plus 5 and this side is also 6x plus 5. The perimeter of this square. So the perimeter of this square will be sum of the uh, lengths of all these sides. So we need to 6x we need to add 6x plus 5 four times and we will get the perimeter of this square which comes out to be 24x plus 20. The perimeter of this square is 24x plus 20. And it is equal to the perimeter of rectangle with length this and width this. So the perimeter of rectangle again we have uh, this rectangle and length is 10x plus 7. So my length of one of the side is 10x plus 7 and the other is x plus 9. Perimeter is again sum of the lengths of all the sides. So we need to have uh, this side will also be x plus 9 and this side will also be 10x plus 9. So we need to all add all these. When we add all these we will get 22x plus 32. So the perimeter of this rectangle is 22x plus 32 and perimeter of the square is 24x plus 20. And it says that both these are equal. So this is equal to this. So when we made it equal, we solve it, we will get 2x is equal to 12 or x is equal to 6. So the value of x is equal to 6. The value of x is equal to 6, the perimeter of rectangle. To find the perimeter of rectangle, the perimeter of rectangle was 22x plus 32. We need to simply substitute 6 here and we, we will find the perimeter of rectangle. And similarly, perimeter of the square, we need to substitute 6 here and we will get the perimeter of the square. Now, what is the value of the area of the square? This is your homework. Please tell us in the comment box that what is the area of the square, which is which length is 6x plus 5, where x is equal to 6. And the area of this rectangle, whose length, uh, whose, uh, uh, length was 10x plus 7 and width was x plus 9 where x is equal to 6. So tell us in the comments what will be the area and rectangle of this square. In a rectangle the ratio of length to width, width is 4 ratio 1. The perimeter is 20 units what is the area. So we have a rectangle and the ratio of length to width is 4 ratio 1. So let the length be 4x and the width be x. Now it's given that the perimeter is 20 units and we know that perimeter is the sum of the lengths of all the sides. So this, if this is x, this is also x by the definition of rectangle. So we are going to, what we are going to do is that we are going to add the lengths of all these sides and when we add the lengths of all these sides we get 10x. And we are given that the perimeter is 20 units. So 10x is equal to 20 which means that x is equal to 2. Fine. Now we have found the length of the width of this rectangle. So the width is 2. So here x is 2 and the uh, line, length is 4 into 2 which is 8. So this is 8. Now we can simply find the area of the triangle uh, of this rectangle which is length multiplied by width so which is 2 multiplied by 8 why we are multiplying 2 multiplied by 8 because we found out that the width is 2 and the length we found out which was 4x initially is 8 so the area of this is 16 so this is our answer the area of the triangle of this uh, rectangle sorry is 16 okay then the next question is what is the measure of each interior angle of a regular hexagon Hexagon is a six-sided closed figure and we need to find the measure of each interior angle. We know the formula that n minus 2 divided by 2 multiplied by 
वन एटी एंड इट्स अ हैक्स कौन सा सिक्स साइडेड फिगर सो एन इज इक्वल टू सिक्स तो सिक्स माइनस टू इज फोर तो वी हैव फोर डिवाइड बाई सिक्स मल्टीप्लाई बाय वन एटी सो वेन वी सॉल्व दिस वी विल गेट द एरिया ऑफ अ रेगुलर हैगजा गॉन विच कम्स आउट टू बी so this is uh, this is this will become 3 and this will become 2 and then we will have this comes out to be 120 so the area of a regular uh, area measure of the angle of the each interior angle of a regular hexagon is 120 degree now what is the measure of the uh, interior angle of a regular pentagon again pentagon is a five sided angle so again we will use the formula n minus 2 divided by n multiply by 180 So we will use this formula again. N minus two divided by n multiplied by 180. And here in n we are going to substitute five. Why? Because it's a pentagon and pentagon is a five-sided angle. And when we substitute, we get 108 degree. So the measure of each interior angle of a pentagon is 108 degree. Now the radius of the circle is eight centimeter. What is the area? So area is pi r square, as we discussed earlier. So we are going to put a, r is equal to eight here. So we will get sixty four pi. So the area of this circle is sixty four pi, which was very easy. Again, another easy question: the radius of the circle is eight centimeter. What is the circumference? Circumference is two pi r. So two pi into r, which is eight. So the circumference of this circle is sixteen pi. So 16 pi is my circumference of the of this circle. Now we are getting to a bit a difficult question, which we says the radius of the circle is 8 centimeter and the central angle is 45 degrees. What is the arc length by the central angle? The arc length is this length, which is x y. And what is the area of the sector x y? So this area is my area. This is my sector area. Whenever we find problems like these, we need to first calculate the area of the circle and the circumference of the circle. Since the radius is 8 cm, the circumference is 2 pi r is equal to 16 pi. So the circumference is 16 pi. And the next step, we are going to find the area. Area is pi r square, so area is 64 pi. Whenever we get questions like this, first we need to calculate the circumference and area so that our job is easy now after that we have calculated the circumference and area let us first to the first point what is the arc length made by the central angle so we have to find the arc length and we know the relationship that we discuss here that central angle divided by 360 is equal to arc length divided by circumference so we are going to use this relation which is central angle divided by 360 is equal to arc length divided by circumference So the central angle is given, which is 45 degree. So 45 divided by 360 is equal to arc length, which is unknown, which is our unknown, because we need to find the arc length. So this is our unknown. Let this be x, and then divide by circumference. Circumference we have find it earlier, which is 16 pi. So after solving this, if we solve this. Uh, we will get x is equal to 2 pi. X is equal to 2 pi. Because if we solve this, 45 adds are is 360. So this is 1 and this is 8. So if we solve this, we will get if we then 16 pi will move to here. So we will get x is equal to 2 pi. So the my arc length is 2 pi. So now the first one is done. So I can write here 2 pi. So I have solved the first one. Now the second is what is the area of the sector x or y? So I so I have to find this area, and we know that to find the area of the circle again we will use this relationship, which is central angle divided by 360 is equal to sector area divided by circle area, and we have we know that circle area. So we are going to come here. We know the central angle is 45, and the uh, total angle is 360, and and then we have the sector area which is unknown. Let that be y, and then we have the total area which is 64 pi. So we are going to solve this again. 45 adds are is 360. 
So when we solve this, we are going to get y is equal to and then the 64 pi is going to move here and 64 divided by 8 is 8. So we are going to get y is equal to 8 pi. So the area of this uh, sector x or y is equal to 8 pi. So we are going to write 8 pi here. So this is our area. This is 8 pi. So that's how we are going to solve these questions using this relationship. This is a very important relationship. That's all for today. Thank you.